Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you'll learn how to design spread footings using the spread footing design module that's available within RAM Elements. Now this spread footing design module can be used in conjunction with an analyzed RAM Elements model or as a standalone application. For today's session, we will be looking at utilizing this design module to design a spread footing for one of the supports in our RAM Elements main application model. Now before we proceed over to the detailing module, let's first take a look at a few of the things that we've incorporated into our RAM Elements main application model. The first thing you're going to notice is that for all of our foundation nodes, we've already created the soil structure interaction by modeling the appropriate soil springs at our support node location. In addition to that, we've also set up our design and service load combinations. So in the home tab of the ribbon toolbar, if you click on the add and edit load conditions icon, you will see that we have generated two distinct set of load combinations for this particular model. Our load combinations for design indicated with the symbol D in front of them will be used for the design of the footing for bending, shear, and punching shear. And if we scroll down, we're also going to notice that we've generated some service load combinations. And these combinations begin with the ID of S. These load combinations will eventually be used for the soil foundation interaction, including checking the footing for sliding and overturning. Now, since we will be using the spread footing design module in, in conjunction with our RAM Elements main application model, we first must ensure that we have a valid analysis and design that's conducted in RAM Elements. To complete that process, you're going to go to the Process tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and analyze your model. In addition to that, we're also going to perform the design. And here we're going to select a concrete code that we are eventually going to be using. Here for today's session, I'm going to be using the ACI 318.14 code. Now that I have a current analysis and design available for my RAM Elements main application model, I'm ready to proceed over to the detailing module. In the ribbon toolbar, select the Modules tab and you will find your foundation tools. Now if I were using the spread footing detailing module as a standalone application, I would open up an empty RAM Elements model and I'd be able to access it through the standalone option. For today's session, I'm using it in conjunction with this model that I've already analyzed. So to start this process, I'm going to select one of my support nodes. I can go up to the Assign icon within the Foundation Tools and then select the Spread Footing option. Now, upon entering the RAM footing design detailing module, you're going to notice that several pieces of information have been brought over from RAM elements. Those include items such as the concrete code that we will be using and the type of foundation that we will be creating. It'll also include things like your column geometry and also all of your load cases, reactions at this support, and your design and service load combinations. Now, if you were designing and detailing multiple spread footings for your model, you'd also be able to see each of those individual items or individual supports within this footing pull-down menu. I chose to import just one support at a time. 
Now before performing the full design, we do need to review some of our input information and customize it as needed. What we're going to notice in the data panel is each of these input parameters either has a red arrow next to it, or I'm going to go ahead and call this a blue pencil. Anything with a blue pencil can be modified and entered directly in the detailing module to be incorporated in your spread footing design. Anything with the red arrow, these are type pieces of information or parameters that have been brought over from your RAM elements model. And in general, you don't want to modify those parameters directly in the spread footing detailing module as they could have an effect on the analysis. If you ever find yourself in a position where you need to change something such as the dimensions of your column, for example, those should really be changed in RAM elements and then you should bring that new analysis file over into the detailing module. For our particular model, let's go ahead and review some of the pieces of information that we can modify in the detailing module. And the first thing we're going to notice is that we can modify our footing material data. Now RAM Elements does come with a complete material or concrete material database. So we're going to go ahead and select the United States Group, RC for reinforced concrete, and then we're going to select the appropriate concrete type. I'm going to select a C4-60, that would be 4,000 PSI concrete with 60 KSI reinforcing steel. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now we can enter the de depth of the base of our footing and also the dimensions of our footing. Let's go ahead and make this a square footing, six foot by six foot. And we can enter the base height information. Now this detailing module can work in two different ways. We can enter our footing geometry, such as the size, like I just did, and then ask the program to perform an optimization. Here I'm basically saying that this is the size of my footing and tell me what reinforcement would work or tell me if it would fail the design checks. I also have an additional option to suggest dimensions. So if you'd like to start with a blank slate and suggest dimensions that would be appropriate for this footing, you can also take that workflow approach. In addition to modifying your footing data, you can also enter your column reinforcement data such as your dowels for both longitudinal and transverse reinforcement and we're also going to enter your soil data we'll ask it to calculate our bearing capacity now again your loads have gone ahead and been entered directly for you and you can check which you want your design moment for your footing to be calculated using I'm going to go ahead and say this last option. Finally, you can also enter the design criteria. So this would be if I was asking the program to suggest dimensions for me. So I can enter a length to width ratio. And if you wanted a square footing, you're going to enter a length to width ratio of 1.0. You can also choose if you were to ask the program to suggest dimensions for you, either restrained width or restrained length, meaning you're going to enter one of those dimensions and it's going to allow it to grow or shrink by the other dimension. This is especially useful if there are obstructions within the soil area that you need to avoid, such as, say, underground utilities or adjacent buildings or property lines. Lastly, you can enter the bar sizes that you wish to have candidates for the footing optimization. Now before proceeding on to the design, the last thing you're going to want to check is some advanced options. These include things like concrete information, what type of concrete you have, the reinforcement or what types of reinforcement bars you're going to be using. And then there's also several soil options available here, including things like your minimum safety factor for sliding and overturning. Now, if you're happy with all of these parameters, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And at this point, we're ready to proceed on to the design. For our first option here, we're going to go ahead and ask the program to perform an optimization. So let's go ahead and click on the Optimize icon. Now, once the optimization has been performed, we're going to take a look at the status bar at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Now, this status bar will be color-coded to indicate the status of your design. My indicator light is currently green, which means that this footing size with the 
was satisfactory for stability or soil structure interaction, and a reinforcement scheme was able to be created. If you received a yellow light, it basically means the design was completed, the code checks were done successfully, but some warnings were issued during that design. And then if your status is red, it means that that footing design did not work and something needs to change. This could be things that might require you to go back to RAM elements, say you need to relay out your loads or change a column size or anything like that. It could also mean maybe adjust some of your footing design parameters that you enter directly into the spread footing design module. Now, if you want to take a look at your results, you're going to go up to your home tab in your ribbon toolbar and you can click on your report icon. I could see that my global status is OK. That corresponds with my indicator light and my status bar. I can see that it locked my footing size by the 6 by 6 by 18 that I had requested. I can see my input data. And I can see the design checks that were performed. Here is the soil foundation interaction information for both sliding and overturning. And I can see that the bending, shear, and punching check shear results are available along with their interaction ratios. Now this report can be printed. It could also be saved in an MS Word or MS, MS Excel format. Let's go ahead and close our report now and take a look at some of the other results that we can see graphically. In the ribbon toolbar, you can now select the detailing tab and we can see all the reinforcement for both longitudinal and transverse that has been created. Now remember, we manually enter what the dowels are for the columns, so those are would have been designed in the column detailing module. Here we're going to focus just on our footing reinforcement. Now this is the reinforcement that was determined through the optimization process and this reinforcement can be modified either directly in the data area, you can resize these columns if you need to, directly in the data area or we have some additional tools to help you generate your own custom reinforcement. If you created your own custom reinforcement you can come back to the home tab of the ribbon toolbar and ask the program to check both the geometry and the reinforcement that you specified. Now this is especially useful if you are evaluating an existing foundation system. Now the last thing we're going to go ahead and take a look at is our soil pressure information. You're able to see this graphic or this contour plot for each of your design and service load combinations. You can also see the forces and the force magnitudes available in these other additional diagrams. You can review your contact stresses and also your settlement. Now let's say for example that I wanted the program instead of specifying my dimensions to go ahead and suggest dimensions. Let's go ahead and click on this suggest footing dimensions option. This may take slightly longer as it's going to investigate additional scenarios. It's reminding me that this process will eliminate any reinforcement even if I created custom reinforcement because obviously the geometry may change and it's gone ahead and suggested dimensions. Now I am going to expect to see a square footing as I entered a length to which width ratio of 1.0. I can also choose to again lock the width or lock the length through that process. Now once I suggested dimensions, I still need to optimize the system to get that reinforcement for the new footing geometry. Now if I like everything I see here, I can go ahead and save this file. It's going to save it as a RAM elements spread footing design module. It'll save it to the application and then I can go ahead and click close. Now, if I reanalyze the model, say for example something had changed, I can go back to that model by opening it up directly in the detailing module. Now, for this exercise, I can proceed on as well to design the rest of my soil springs. Again, if all the parameters are the, are the same for each of your foundations 
or supports within your RAM elements model, it is possible to bring over more than one support at the time at a time. But doing that would assume that most of those design parameters between the different supports were the same. So this concludes our process for designing spread footings using the spread footing design module in conjunction with a RAM elements application. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.